everybody. Welcome to Bird Tricks Tuesday. I'm Jamie Lee. This is Dave Womack. So we're pretty excited this week to talk to you about flight training. We had about 13 questions about flight training and a lot of people had the same questions. So we thought that we would kind of tackle that. We're going to show as much as we can. Unfortunately for us, all of our birds, well not really for us, but unfortunately for you, all of our birds are already flight trained. So we can't really show you guys what it looks like to encourage a bird who is re reluctant to fly to fly. Um, we wish we could, but we're just not in the situation or in the environment to be able to show you guys that, but we're going to talk you through it as best we can. Yeah, so uh, some of the things we can kind of show you how uh, you can start if your bird is like reluctant to fly, you bring up. So we can show you some of that with Cressy, but um, basically we're going to try to do our best to answer some of the questions that you do have. Keep in mind this is not so much about outdoor free flight training as it is just flight training in general for indoor use. Um, outdoor stuff is a whole different course. It's a reason why we do one-on-one -on -one training for that. Uh, it's, it's very just, specific. There's a lot to it. So what we're doing today is just going to go over a few of the basics. So starting with indoor flight training, uh, two of the best questions I thought that we could start with was how do you get started in flight training indoors and what are the best techniques to use indoors? So some of the best techniques to use indoors are subjects that we've already talked about in our other videos such as random rewarding. We use a lot of that for flight training. Um, it's probably one of our best methods. We also use target training. If the bird is reluctant to fly, we will usually bring out the chopstick and that will get the bird, encourage the bird to fly. So do we want to show some Cassie? Yeah, so just to start out, what, what I typically do, just wait, all right, yeah, she's, she's ready to do a little training. So what I like to do is actually have it where uh, if a bird is a little bit reluctant, then I will slightly, you can either use uh, target training to get the bird to step up, but you want to get the step up and then go back. Most of your birds should be doing this fine. If not, then you have other issues you need to work out first. If you need to use a target stick for this, go ahead and do that as well. So then once they're stepping up pretty well, come on. <laughs> you're gonna push that back a little bit further. So the bird's making a slightly bigger step. Uh, eventually you want the bird to make a little bit of a jump. Come on. And that's going to be the very first part. Of <laughs> be the very first part of getting your bird to uh, understand jumping to your hand because you start with step up, then you go to jump, and then you go into long. Here, but more like that. So you can kind of see the slow progression of how that works um, in this in a tight environment. But hopefully that is the first tip to help you out. Yeah, definitely. And if your bird is reluctant still, I mean, Cressy did that pretty easily. If your bird is still reluctant to maybe go to the hop, just remember to spend a lot of time at each step. So Dave showed you pretty quickly what those steps are, but for you and your bird, it might be a lot slower. So you may need to spend a lot of time with the step up. Um, you may need to spend a lot more time with the jump and you might need to back up just a lot slower. You may also want to jackpot reward your bird where you give it a bunch of treats for a job well done on that very first hop because it takes a lot of courage for some birds to take that first hop. So you want to make sure that you're rewarding as much as possible so that they are likely to do it again. And so some of the steps that you just saw, the step up, a lot of people forget that step up is a trick, and we mention this all the time, but every interaction you have with a bird is a training session. You're either increasing the likelihood the bird's gonna do what you want, or decreasing that likelihood. And so, even the step up, as stupid and simple as it sounds, it is a trick, so don't forget to click and reward occasionally for that, especially if you're wanting to get into flight training. That's one of the first things that we recommend is make sure that, that stepping up on cue is really done properly, uh, and that bird is doing it when you ask it to, every time you ask it to. Otherwise, if not, you need to go back and train that because if the bird's not stepping up for you when you ask it to, it's not gonna jump to you. For sure, and also the stepping up should look like how it did for Dave, if you wanna show them that again. It's literally the bird stepping up. It's not you pushing into the bird's chest. It's not you having to pick the bird's feet off of the perch. It's the bird willingly stepping to you. So really keep that in mind and uh, when you're working on the step up. Also, don't ever get into the point where you expect your bird to, sp to step up. A lot of people um, that we saw in One Day Miracles, they just expect it of their bird. And <laughs> it was a demanding thing. It was a very demanding thing. And it's like you wouldn't expect your best friend to do everything and anything for you. I mean, you want them to, but no. you wouldn't just expect it. 
<laughs> because then they're less likely to want to do that for you if you're just always expecting them to drop everything for you. So yes, they will want to, but anyways, it gets a little deep, but. A good thing that I always suggest when I, when I see people like, step up, step up, they give a command versus a request. Mm -hmm. When you're working with birds, everything should be a request. Will you step up? If the answer is no, the bird's going to keep its feet there, it's, or it's going to bite you, or it's not going to want to jump. So if the answer is no to the request, start thinking to yourself, why? Is the bird not hungry enough? Is the bird overweight? Um, is the bird too hungry? You have to figure all these things out, and, and a lot of what we do helps you, but hopefully you already know kind of where I'm coming from with that, so that you ask, hey, will you step up? And that was a very enthousi enthusiastic hell yes right there. So um, that's what you should see with your birds uh, versus like pushing into the chest. If you're pushing into the chest, you're already making mistakes. Yeah, it's no longer a step up at that point. And then going back to what Jamie said too, what I just showed you those steps would not just be one training session unless you have a bird that really likes, is really willing to fly to you. The, this, well, like this. <laughs> so the, the step up, you might spend a week on that. And again, two to five minute training sessions tops. If you think that your bird's willing to train longer than that, you're wrong, please don't. Like keep it to two to five minute sessions or you'll burn out your bird and they're not gonna wanna do that training. And honestly, what I like to call is opportunistic training. You can also work with your bird when you see that your bird is willing to work. You can just do a quick 10, 20 second session and you can get really far. That's usually how I train our birds new tricks, capture behaviors and capture talking is usually just through those really short training sessions that are random. Perfect. Yeah. So. Okay. So the first thing that you want to train is just a simple A to B. That means goes from you to another person. And you want to work on that consistently. And then you literally just want to get it to be further. So as long as you can, um, depending on your house. Cressy. Good girl, Cressy. Do you want to try going all the way to the back? Make sure they know they're not throwing the bird. And make sure that you're never throwing your bird. Cressy literally just leaves my hand on call. This is her wanting to do it. So we're gonna show you a couple other indoor techniques that we use. So what we're about to show you is some ascending and descending. Because descending is actually harder, it requires more skill. Uh, Cressy is actually gonna to fly to Dave to descend because she likes him a little bit better and I'm gonna be up the stairs in the theater. So we're gonna show you exactly what this looks like. We're gonna start short and then we're gonna lengthen the flight. Ready? We're also using FR1, so every yeah. time the bird does behavior, it gets a treat because we're still in the training phase. Um, Jamie mentioned random rewarding, which we do use once the bird understands a little bit more of the tricks, but for right now, it's FR1. Yeah. Chrissy! Chrissy! No. Chrissy! So ascending takes more strength. And she's a little distracted by the people in the theater right now. Descending takes more skill and being able to slow down. Which is why it is so much harder. It's also easier to descend the further away they are because they have more space to be able to descend versus trying to just drop. So one of the things we always mention is never to throw your bird and the reason for that is that we've seen a lot of people throw their birds when doing flight training and eventually the bird just doesn't come back because one it gets tired from flight and it assumes that every time it comes to you it has to fly so you're no longer a safe spot to fly um, to land on because you're going to force the bird to fly so that's one of the reasons we try not to ever fl um, throw our birds. The but thing, you do see a movement with us moving our hand forward. Yeah, and we do want to explain why we do that and, and how it helps us. Basically, Cressy is bonded more to Dave, obviously, so she takes a little bit more encouragement to come to me. And one of the techniques that we use is, um, do we want to just show them? I could probably go over this way. Sure. Okay. Well, we can just do it from right here. Okay. Oh, you're saying with running? No, 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 I'm saying with that. Yeah, I'll just switch okay. sides. All right, so we'll show you what this looks like. Cressy. So you can see that Dave just barely tilted his hand. And if he, if you do that, he's basically going like this. Cressy can still hang on just fine if she doesn't want to go, but it does encourage her to go. 
and she doesn't really need it to go to Dave. Um, but it does encourage her to go without forcing her to go. So that is one of the techniques that we use to encourage a bird to fly if they are maybe a little bit hesitant. Yeah. The other technique that we use, and we actually use this early on with Cressy, um, to get her to do long exploration flights. And to, to choose to do that. And to choose to do it, um, is actually running with her. Now I don't suggest or recommend that anybody does this unless your bird fully, fully trusts you. Um, and again, this is something that she can do and she can completely hang on. She doesn't have to fly, but it does basically the same thing as this technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that to them. Okay. And Chrissy, I'm gonna start from back here. Ready? So literally all it does is it puts me in motion, which puts her in motion, and she's more likely to fly just because it's more fun. Also, I've found, <clears throat> at least outdoors and indoors, if it's a really big space, if we run with our birds, they're more likely to take a longer flight and feel like we're flying with them, yeah. so to speak. That's why you usually see me running in White Sands, New Mexico and Moab, Utah. Um, it's usually to get the birds going. Even if they are just perched somewhere or in a tree, if I start running, they'll usually go along with me. So it's one of the techniques that I tend to use a little bit more so. We should talk to you about um, how to find the right room to be able to train in. So obviously if you have a yeah. theater, this is <laughs> this is a pretty good spot, but only because we trust that our birds will come back to us when we call them. So you wouldn't want to start in a room this size or you're asking for trouble. Um, you do want to start in a room that is safe. So if the bird hits a window, uh, you know, keep the, the curtains closed so it can't hit the window. If um, for whatever reason, a lot of birds will run into walls. So do this in a carpeted area. So if it hits a wall, it's going to come down on carpet versus like cement in a garage or something or like that. Or tile, definitely. Uh, another thing really that we suggest sometimes is putting um, packing blankets around the edges of walls or pillows or just blankets, just something so that if and when the bird does hit the wall when it's learning, it's just gonna be safer. Because if the bird hits, you don't wanna have its keel um, you don't want it to, to end up hurting or bruising or splitting open. Some birds are super thin-skinned here, um, and so they can, they can get a lot of damage on accident by hitting the ground. Uh, and also, um, don't hesitate to catch your bird. If your bird does like crash into something and you can run and you can catch it while they're sliding down, do so. Like Definitely do that. There's no reason not to. You want to make sure that your bird's completely safe. And my other thought on this that I want to make sure that I cover is what we do is uh, if a bird ever crashes, we it shows that we push the bird probably too far, but the important thing is that you allow the bird to come back to you. Don't go get the bird, because the, the first time that you tell the bird, hey, I'm, if you crash, I'm gonna come get you, you're ruining the training. You're setting yourself up for failure in the future, because let's say you eventually take this to outdoor free flight. Um, if the bird, let's say, goes over a side of the hill and the other side of the trees and crashes, doesn't come back, you're telling the bird you're gonna go find it. And so if the bird accidentally gets outside, you're setting yourself up for failure by doing that. So again, make sure that if the bird, let's say gets tired and lands on one of these theater seats, I'll wait it out. I'll wait till the bird's got his breath back and then we'll just simply call the bird back and do whatever we can to coax it. Now, if the bird's not doing it because you're at too far of a distance, you simply go a little bit closer to the bird until you're seeing body language signs that maybe it wants to fly to you. And so that's what we do to make sure that we aren't ever going to get the bird and screwing up the training. The exception to this is if if the bird is potentially injured, obviously go take care of the bird's needs first. But Yeah, definitely. But this is, um, we actually showed this on our most recent free flight trip. Our birds were really out of shape, especially our two macaws that we had left home. And um, when we started flying them, they were not making it. They were going like they could normally, and then they were not making it all the way. They were running out of steam. And they were just like descending down and landing on the ground. And we couldn't just go get them because we didn't want to train them that that's what would happen when they crash. So um, we actually had them and they would come running back. I have a bunch of videos There's of so Comet and Tusa just so like running back. And that's totally fine. We reward that as long as they're running back to us and we will pick them up no problem. They may just not have the energy to fly back. And that's totally okay. But as long as they're coming back on their own, that's the main point of that. I also want to add that this is not this this video is not an all-inclusive video that says every detail about flight training. It's more just some of the bare basics. Um, there's a lot there's a lot that goes into it that we just simply can't cover in this short a time. But we want to give you a little bit of foundation and some early tr early training techniques to be able to get your bird closer to where you want it to be. Yeah. Also, we do go into in-depth detail and we actually show how we trained our three macaws, Comet, Tusa, and Jinx, which are two Camelots and one blue-throated macaw. We show how we trained flight trained them from the very very 
beginning in our total transformation series there's an entire section on flight training it's in depth we filmed it in Sedona Arizona mm -hmm. and like some beautiful beautiful places um, basically how we started in the entire tire process so if you do want those like how to steps and the absolute detail that you can possibly get it is in that series which I can leave a link in the description but it's birdtricks.com forward slash seminar series two I believe so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but I can include that so if you guys are interested in a course on flight training we do have it this is just something that we wanted to get you guys started and get you guys at least some information <laughs> So one of the questions that we got about flight training is that somebody was trying to use target training to flight train, but their bird is afraid of the target stick. And uh, this is why we've done our Bird Tricks Tuesday videos, is we actually went over pretty much everything target training in our Parrot Training 101 Bird Tricks Tuesday video. So please refer back to that. And if you guys can, I made a playlist of all of our Bird Tricks Tuesday videos so that you guys can catch up and see the ones that you may have missed, just because we're trying to answer the most common questions and not go over repeat information. So please check yeah. that one out. I'll leave a link in the description as well. Another Another question that we got is somebody asking if they could. You're all right, Cody, you can pass. <laughs> it's You're Cody in like again. all the videos. Did you get my water jugs? Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, Cody. So, one of the next questions that we got was um, if you could free fly your bird, which I assume they mean outdoors, and train the bird to stay close while still giving it the freedom to be outside. And this is a tricky one. Um, for those that take our free flight course, which is one of the reasons that we love our Freedom of Flight documentary, is it literally captures this in both mm -hmm. uh, Kai and Jason, who are the two people that we were training at the time with our birds. At some point in the flight training process, especially when you take the bird outdoors, but this even happens indoors, the bird takes an exploratory flight. And what that means is Instead of going A to B, A to B, A to B, like you're constantly working on with your bird, it will suddenly just take off. And it scares the lights out of everybody. Yeah. It scared us the first time as well with each and every one of our birds that we trained. It just, it scares you because it looks like they're taking off with no even especially sense. Especially bandit. Yeah, especially bandit. <laughs> no sense of coming back. But they do, and this is completely natural. So I would say um, because this is so instinctive for the birds to do, you can't really train them to stay within like an eight foot diameter or proximity to you as far as giving them the outdoor freedom only because the outdoor environment is uncontrollable so you never know what's going to happen that may spook your bird um, our birds are super super desensitized but that doesn't mean that something may not spook them so mm -hmm. it's just very unpredictable um so i would say that it's it's not quite realistic well realistic. that being said they're there are people that do this. We've done it to some extent. Um, some people in the industry call it at liberty flying, and that's basically where the birds are pets, but they're loose. And if that's what you're asking, yes, it's possible. Um, it's also a good way to lose your birds. Um, we've, like when we were touring with Ringling Brothers, we had a day where all the elephants came over to our friend Sherry's property, and she's on 300 acres, and the elephants were roaming, and they are swimming in the pond, and everyone's having a good time, and we let all of our birds out for the day. Um, we really know our birds, we really, tr really trust our birds, and we're actually able to just call them all back when we're done. Um, so it can be done, but it's not something that you yeah. you get there very fast. Yeah, and also even with that, it's not something where your bird stays close. Yeah, they were really, they were pretty far away. Our birds, yeah, and, and I think that what Dave's referring to, those birds, those birds are also like fairly far away. They're doing very long exploratory flights. Um, they may even land off a few miles away and then come back um, because they are just out all day they get in really really good shape yeah. so they can do longer flights they can stay out longer um, they don't have to come back as much so it's not quite the same as I think what this person is wanting as far as taking your bird out but having it not go you know past a leash line yeah um, it's not it's, it's just not realistic I don't feel not really so I mean there's different ways where you can kind of control it like if you watch a freedom of flight or you watch any of our Moab videos where we're, we're sitting around kind of the tree the birds almost know that is the home base and so yeah. they don't choose to go very far um, it gets it gets really complex to try to answer the question but there's possibilities of being able, of being to, able to take your bird outdoors but at the same time you should be focusing on how to keep the bird close through training so i guess the answer True. to that is is if you don't want the bird to go too far just do a lot of trick training with it while it's out there or it should be engaged. occasionally cue things that yeah they keep it engaged yeah definitely i agree um 
So a lot of people are asking how to teach their bird to land properly. And one of the, I guess, examples of this person struggling with this is that they had their bird on a tea stand and they put a food dish directly below and expected the bird to be able to get from the tea stand to the food dish. And one of the things that I was actually referring to with the descending is that that is really complicated. So if, if the bird is here and the food is directly below, the bird would literally have to jump and tuck in its wings and then take them out at the very last minute to, to be able to land that. And it's just not likely for a bird to be able to do that. A bird needs a lot more space to descend and to descend properly and skillfully. So please keep that in mind. And that's where a lot of people go wrong when they accidentally lose their birds outside and it gets stuck in a tree. They go directly below the tree and, and call the bird and the bird literally cannot make that flight. So it's, it's you almost want to be at a 45 degree angle or or... Or more. Or less, technically. Oh, um, yeah. So that the bird can have a longer flight pattern to get to you, but then you also gauge the difference between can the bird make a short flight at a 45 degree angle or can the bird make a really long flight at a 10 degree angle and get there? You know, where's where's the balance? But it's not going straight down. Uh, Bandit's one of our only ones that can actually just drop straight down yeah. and like seems to like to. Yeah, he does like to. He literally tucks in his wings yeah. and dives. Free falls. Yeah, so he's, he's crazy. But um, one of the things that you can work on to teach your bird to land properly is just by everything that we say. We say start small and then work your way big. So so literally start from not so much of a descend to a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And that will really teach your bird how to work on its skills. Yeah. And another thing that we, we need to start wrapping up, because um, okay. our babysitter comes back in five minutes, but uh, the hide and seek is something that yes that we talk about a lot and it is in the uh, the Total Transformation Parrot Training Seminar. We show some really cool footage really from another cool. cruise ship where basically you have the whole theater, Jamie goes and hides, and the bird goes through and finds her out of all the seats. And also we do it outdoors. And yeah. so... Um, More if, fun outdoors. If we have time, <laughs> we're going to try to replicate that here, but we're, we're running we out of time. We can go ahead. So. Let's go show it. Want to try it? Yeah. All right. Hopefully this video gives you enough insight to the very basics of the beginner part of flight training. And now obviously this isn't about outdoor flight training, it's about the indoor stuff that you have to do before you get to outdoors. So we're not suggesting anybody takes this information and takes their bird outside. I don't want anybody losing their bird over, um, over this. We want to help you and just give you a little bit of the basics so that you can get started. Yeah, and really encourage your birds that aren't wanting to fly to fly um, if it's something that they might be encouraged to do. Also, like we talked about last week, setting up their environment in a way that encourage encourages flight is a really good way to get those birds that maybe their muscles have atrophied or maybe they had a really bad wing clip um, and they need a lot of time to get used to the idea of using their wings as a mode of transportation is um, that's a great way to get them into it so really really go back to maybe last week's video and check that out so that you can set your bird up for success in a way that it's always making small steps in the right direction towards flight without you actually having to do anything on a day-to-day -day basis yet yeah and also we want to just let you know that this is probably our last uh, weekly video that we're going to do for a while. We just are having too hard of a time trying to keep up with, uh, with the workload that this requires to do. So it uh, doesn't mean we won't be giving you any more good videos. We're going to keep doing this. It's just probably not going to be weekly from this point forward. We want to give it a good run. Uh, we definitely have appreciated the feedback you guys do give us um, and the questions you ask are great. So we will continue to, a to answer these. So keep the questions coming and, and uh, it just won't be every week that we're doing it for, for now. It's just yeah. unfortunately between 
uh, everything we're doing, we just... We're, we're getting deep. a little burned out, um, to be honest. We're just, uh, we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. And we've had a lot of fun with it, but at the same time, we realized that we need to be putting the time into our own show and, and everything. And Dave actually just got his new Dove Act into the show this week, and we need to spend a lot of time really rehearsing it and making it just exactly where we want it to be. We also have a new illusion coming and a ton of more things that you guys don't need to be worried about, but we just need to be selecting our time really selectively. A little differently. Yeah. But, uh, so we're going to definitely still bring you videos and we'll definitely film the behind the scenes videos still for you guys. And if you guys have questions, we can always do video requests still. Um, but we probably won't be bringing any more Bird Tricks Tuesdays to you guys uh, anymore. So we're sorry. Still might be a Tuesday once a month. It might uh, be a monthly video instead. Just something that we can really for us to do. Yeah, have the time for and, and put together. So yeah. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed these and uh, thanks for watching. Yay! You did it, Capri! <laughs>